the difference between animation film and live action film? I don't know. In live action, it's a little gap between the creator and the actor. The actor has its own views on the matter. They can agree or disagree, they can change things, there's no full control. As animator, when he acts, he embodies his own beliefs in the way that he sees it as a pure idea from the beginning to the end. And when his hand, in this case Nasser, draws, every dot follows this idea from the beginning. Pure collaboration. One of the biggest skills of an animator is knowing how to um, take real movement, stretch it, you know, exaggerate it, make something that won't happen in real life in order to make it real. And I could change sizes and I could metamorph from a, a red spot into myself, into a candle. In live shooting, you're just a horse, you go on, you wave your tail and, and you know, you munch the grass and you can gallop a bit. But that's it, really. It's totally aware of its own language. It's a complete mode of illusion and artifice. Yeah. And it's not up, you know, putting, the, putting the camera there. And so if you take live action per se, yes. it's purely f shooting a footage of actor doing his stuff. Also, have you noticed in the film, my words have created a horse. By merely speaking, I've created a miracle. What's limited in the in, in the in the real world, in the concrete world, but what's enabled by you know the liberations of animation? I have been given a power beyond your physical limitation. Show me one character who does it in your love films. We have plenty of fantasy films where. Ah uh, no, I'm not a fantasy. Do I look like a fantasy to you? That film is not a fantasy. It's quite, it's like a documentary of the self-discovery. How did you feel to be an animated caricature? Excuse me, that wasn't a caricature. What was it? A documentary of my process of discovery, of the animation experience. I was observed from external point of view. Every thought of my character, myself, was controlled, manipulated and expressed by the creator. You couldn't do it with a live person. You have no control over his thoughts and his thoughts affect his behavior and representation. My body, my changing of appearance, it's all compiled with a general change of my thought. But I thought in, in live action film you can use filters and special effects. But then you see it becomes animation. That's not live action anymore. Animation is unique. It's like writing a story and while you write it comes alive. So it can, you know, it could offer a methodology for other types of aesthetics. So it's always been authorially driven, always been self reflexive now that we have seen the interviews, can I ask you, why did you choose to interview your own animated characters? I wanted um, you to hear my characters talking about the experience of being made through the eyes of animator because a character being an extension of myself. So putting it outside of myself and observing it is a, like a meta-analysis. Is this film an interview film or is it artistic? So this film is first of all about art. Any art is critical because the author is aware of what he's doing, whether consciously or not. In my case it's obviously very conscious, very self-aware, very reflexive. It's an art. But it's also reflecting on my process. It's a self-conscious art. I wanted people to see animation practice and yet being aware of its processes.
We are all led to the truth for which we are ready. When we find truth, we find wisdom and peace. This story is about such wisdom and peace, which a king should bring to his people. Once upon a time there was a man who was a king. The king had a son. As time passed by, the king had to be sure that the prince was ready to take on his duties. His Majesty the King is calling for his son for a special present for the prince's birthday. My son, I have a special gift for you. Listen to my voice and carry it with you. Close your eyes. This horse I give you today possesses great wisdom and will carry you on your journey. My journey, father? Yes, my son. Open your eyes, my son. Listen, look and learn, my son. And bring me this. Bring me the truth. Where are you going? You will not be eating from rich people's tables. Hunger only for the truth. Oh, good people, please tell me, what is the truth? What a beautiful horse! And that thing poking from your bag, is this bread? Let us taste from your bread, and we shall tell you the truth. Indeed, a bread as we eat, but much more sweet. Interesting indeed! The truth you are after? The truth is so simple. The truth is that the world is wide, that is covered with seas of sand and a hot big sun is above us all. Hmm, hot big sun is above us all. We are very lucky today. A man came to visit with bread in his hands. What interesting bread you bring. Indeed, the bread we eat, but very salty. The truth, the truth is that the world is wide and cold and icy, and the sun is rare and small. The sun is rare and small, but I thought, I mean, someone just said the sun is big and hot. Or is it rare and small? I have not found the truth. What will I bring my father? We shall go home now. My son! Father! When I asked for the truth, they asked for my bread, and they told me of diverse things. And the truth, my son? Mm, the truth. I didn't find the truth at the top of the highest mountain, nor in the farther seas, nor I found it in the deepest forests, or the driest lands. For father, the truth is found in the heart of every man and as people are different so is the truth the truth is made of different truth this is my truth to you father now you know my son now the kingdom is yours